Hey guys, this is Courtney from Willis Bloom and today we're going to be looking at the chart of Tyler Henry who is a psychic medium on the famous TV show The Hollywood Medium. So today we're going to see is Tyler legitimate? We're also going to see other aspects of his personal life that he's displayed on TV including his dark family history and ba basically his biggest soul lesson and kind of experiences he's had through his chart. So let's go ahead and dive in. The first thing when I pulled up his chart that really stood out to me was the fact that, well, he has a, a, um, a Capricorn son. So we can already kind of see this come through in his life. He's extremely hardworking. Not only does he have his son in Capricorn, but he also has it making a sextile to Saturn within a three degree orb. So we can see that again, he has a lot of responsibility or a sense of duty and authority that automatically comes into his personality. You can rely on him. You can trust him. And with Saturn in the seventh house, you can especially trust him within relationships and with others. So on top of this, he also has his son in a very tight conjunction with Neptune. So it's, again, this is within a two degree orb and then a loose one as well with Uranus. So this tight conjunction with Neptune to me is very common in people who have a lot of creative, artistic, and spiritual talents, or they can go in the opposite direction and become liars <laughs> and people who are con artists, which um, I think I might, may have done a chart on this in my astrology course. Um, the person, I think her name was Anna Sorokin, Sorokin or something. She was a huge con artist and she had Neptune on her Mercury, I think, or Neptune on her sun. Regardless, there is a potential to be a liar here, but typically what I see with Neptune's sun is a highly sensitive person. This is an empath. This is absolutely a psychic, a medium, somebody who can let a lot of energies in and who may really struggle with boundaries as well as a result of this. Neptune is a planet that helps us act as a conduit, especially wherever it is in our chart. And being on the sun, this is his life force, his vitality, his identity, his career, his purpose. All of those things have a direct access to source. What this does though, is it can often weaken the immune system because it does remove our boundaries, our defenses, and it helps us to connect with the emotions, the energies, the subtle imagery, the visions that are around us. And um, I believe Frida Kahlo, if you look at the video I did on her, she also had Neptune conjunct her son and she was extremely creative visionary, but she also had a lot of health conditions. And that's what we see with Tyler Henry as well. If you know anything about him in his TV show, you know that he suffered from some kind of brain um, issue where his brain was actually swelling. And he had to have surgery and it was just really scary. He was out for a while. He was very weak. I think he, I don't know if he was near death, but he was definitely in the realm of being so sick that he was able to kind of take a step back from actual life and just care for himself. And so I do think that he will have a general predisposition to have a weakened immune system or weakened vitality and health as a result of having this talent and the skill and the abilities to um, remove his boundaries. And so it, ha it kind of is a double-edged sword. And if you see his show and you watch him live, you can see he goes through a lot physically to give people these psychic medium readings connecting with their past loved ones. He's sweating, he's fatigued, he's exhausted and dehydrated and is basically on the verge of passing out at times unless he has enough breaks and times to take care of himself. So we can see here that, again, it's this really strong double-edged sword. Okay, so now let's go ahead and look at his career. So we did already look at that specifically with the sun, but let's also, of course, look at his midheaven and his ascendant. So these are the two aspects that I look at for career and for identity, and they're both ruled by Mercury because the midheaven is Gemini, the ascendant is Virgo, and both of these signs are ruled by the planet Mercury. So we want to look at the planet Mercury in his chart to understand a little bit more about the context of his career. So he has Mercury retrograde in Aquarius in the sixth house, and it's conjunct Uranus, and it's also conjunct Mars, which is the ruler of his eighth house. 
So we can see already here with Mercury conjunct Uranus, he's going to have a particularly odd type of career. He's going to do something different, something progressive, something eccentric because of the fact that he was not born in a conventional way. He is a very unconventional person. We can see that also with his moon making a square to Neptune and Uranus. So we can see that he may have struggled growing up with the fact that he was so unconventional. And we're going to talk about that a little bit later. But this struggle and this unconventionality ultimately grew into one of his superpowers, which is, you know, being the psychic medium and being able to go out there and give people readings and, and not necessarily feel like, Held, like he's held back or has to fit into a certain stereotype or a certain box because he was born different, always knew he was different, never felt like he belonged. And then as he grew older, he found his place in society. So we can see that, again, he's meant to be doing something different. And because it's in the sign of Mercury, we can see something here related to communication, which is why he has a TV show in particular. He also does tours um, and will give readings in front of live audiences. So we can see this act of kind of not performing, but being able to speak and connect to a wide range of people. And these planets are in the sign of Aquarius, which is related to kind of new age topics, which makes a lot of sense that he's a psychic medium. And it's also related to technology and the internet. And so, and, and as well as communities and humanitarianism. And I think all those things combine really well into what he's doing, given that he does have a TV show given that his work is absolutely to help the world and, um, and yes. So the other thing that we should keep in mind is that it's conjunct Mars. So sometimes we have Mercury conjunct Mars. You can have, um, a little bit of anxiety. So I'd be curious, especially with all this air in his chart, if he's, um, kind of an anxious person, this could also affect his health, but Mercury conjunct Mars can, create a lot of internal stimulation. He's also a Virgo rising, which can create a per some perfectionism. So I can see him really getting himself worked up over not performing well enough, not being good enough. And then with his son and, and Capricorn sex telling Saturn, he's going to kind of work himself into the ground. So um, it's going to be very important for him with that Neptune on his son to take a lot of breaks and to be very mindful of his health because his perfectionism could push him to the limits. And so we can see that there. We can also sometimes see with, especially with Uranus combined here as well, is somebody who's very direct, who's very honest, who's very frank. And we see this in his communication that he's honest with people, but it's so it comes out so gentle. How How is that the case? How is he able to have this kind of sharp wit and piercing intellect and very direct, honest communication while still being so compassionate, so gentle, and it, it coming across as not bad at all. And it's because Neptune is on his son. And Neptune is this very, very compassionate savior, Jesus type energy. So he just embodies this within him. And so he has the ability to maybe have a sharp, frank kind of sense of humor or way of expressing things. But because of his nature, he doesn't want to hurt people. He wants to be gentle. He wants to deliver this message in the best way possible. And so we can see he was really cut out for this because he's willing to talk about the difficult stuff. Mars is the ruler of his eighth house. It's the, first of all, the eighth house is associated with death, which makes a lot of sense that he's connecting to pass on loved ones. So it's quite literal in that way. But the eighth house is also the house of trauma and crisis and things that we've accumulated from our past that we have a lot of fear around, that we have a lot of pain around. And we can see that he's willing to talk about this directly and very frankly and openly with people and because Uranus is here and Neptune is on his son, there is no judgment in this process either. So people really feel comfortable with him because he's not only being frank, but he doesn't care. He doesn't care what you do. He doesn't care about your past. He's seeing people as souls and he's looking beyond what is right there in front of him. And so we can see that um, he has kind of the perfect energy for this type of career. And, um, Let's talk a little bit about his family now. So he has Pluto right on his IC, which is his family line. Pluto is a planet associated with power, darkness, secrets, taboos, things that we especially want to keep hidden from our past. 
And this is especially true because it's in the fourth house, which is already a very hidden house. It's already something where it's somewhat, you know, untouchable that people don't always notice this about us or know this about us. And Pluto here is signifying that there's some kind of family history or family lineage that um, may either be abusive or traumatic or um, secretive or very powerful that maybe not everybody else really gets to experience in their life. So we know that there's going to be something like that. And we can actually hear about his family story and learn that his mother was given up to another family or to another woman. I think she was coerced or somehow forced into giving her daughter up. Um, but yeah, the, his grandmother gave gave her mom up to this family that ended up being well, the woman ended up being a murderer. So she was a part of this family that kind of looked nothing like her. So I don't know why they thought they looked, they were family. But um, she, she grew up with this family that randomly got her and they were pretty abusive and this woman literally killed someone. So she grew up in this really dark kind of story away from her own actual brothers and sisters and there was all these secrets and unknown qualities to their family history. And that's part of what they explore in the TV show. And so we can see that coming into play here and how this really does actually affect Tyler. I don't know um, if this comes through because he's very close with his mother. So there may be something where, um, you know, there is such a close relationship with his mother and such a lack of boundaries in his kind of personality that he may take on actually a lot of this trauma and darkness and secrecy and internalize that through his mother um, because oftentimes um, Pluto in the fourth house can be a first-hand experience but I do think it's more so a second-hand experience for him Pluto did I say first house I think I said fourth house um, Pluto in the fourth is also squaring his Venus which is on his descendant so this is a very relationship oriented person he, with Venus on the Descendant, is really going to prioritize connection. It's going to be very important for him to have harmony, to get along. But we, on top of this, we see Venus in Aquarius. And so generally when I see something like that, there is usually a theme, especially with so many plants in Aquarius, that my way of socializing doesn't match everybody else's way. I don't feel like I belong. I feel like I maybe... I'm not even from this planet or am some kind of star seed. I hear this all the time with people with strong Aquarius. They will have crazy dreams. They will connect to other realms. Um, they just, they basically feel like they're not fully of this earth, of this planet. And so when they kind of go out into the world, they don't really feel like they connect very easily with people because other people don't act the way they do, don't think the way that they do, and maybe don't prioritize the same things that they do. And so Venus and Aquarius will often prioritize the needs of the group or humanity in general. So we can see not only does he really prioritize relationships, but he is doing this also on a larger collective as well. So I'm not just going to value my one-on-one -on -one dynamic, which is Venus on the descendant, but I'm also going to make this about my community that I belong to and the people all around me. Venus is squaring Pluto. So this is going to bring some high intensity into his relationships. Um, I think that ultimately some of the kind of trauma that he's inheriting from his mother will affect his relationship dynamics with this square. That would be my presumption. Also, Venus square Pluto can make it feel like you have a little bit of fear around opening up, around vulnerability, and around relationships. Because Venus is our sense of belonging and harmony and connection, and Pluto is a planet of fear and control and manipulation. And so we can oftentimes not want to experience betrayal or people controlling us or we feel like if we do open up it's going to be unsafe all these ideas are sort of linked together through these planets so he has a lot of kind of intense emotions within his relationship dynamics and i think it's because he was bullied and i think you can kind of see that here with this square you know people maybe not not only not accepting him but maybe he even would attract people who tried to control him or tried to manipulate him or take advantage of him because he lacked the boundaries with Neptune on his son. And Venus is also his ruler of his second house. 
and his ninth house. So this could have happened in school or this could happen in in religion or something related to beliefs. This could happen in the area of finances in his life. You might find that people try to take advantage of him. So if I saw a client with this in their chart and I saw that they were doing really well on a TV show and made a lot of money, I would be warning them about the potential to find manipulative or controlling people that were after his money or um, that were in charge of his money. Or I would maybe warn him about being overly concerned with financial matters because you might even become a little bit obsessive about finances or about beliefs or about your relationships. Like those areas of your life you can become overly invested in to the place where, to the point of, of, of obsession, like I mentioned. So that's something that I would warn him about. Um, it could also kind of equate to sexual appetite, having a stronger sexual appetite, although that might not necessarily be the case in the sign of Aquarius. Um, but with Mars on his ascendant ruler on Mercury, this could also increase his appetite. Um, and we can see also the potential for um, being gay because his... Um, because of all these planets in Aquarius, especially Mars, which has to do with sexuality, and also because his ascendant ruler, Mercury, is going to describe him and his preferences, the way he makes decisions, the way he appears, and Uranus is here. So Uranus and Aquarius, those are the typically the signs and the planets linked with maybe having different sexual preferences than the norm. And then on top of this, his moon is also squaring Uranus, so that can be a second indicator. And again, his moon is in the second so the moon in the second is another indicator of really being desirous of money or feeling like you want money to feel financially secure or emotionally secure and stable. So people with moon in the second house, they can't just like leave one job and not have one for a few months and then go to another. They need to feel like they're taking care of things, especially with his son, square Saturn. He's very practical. He's very grounded. I don't necessarily think he's super indulgent although he could be with venus square pluto and moon and libra in the second but his other aspects of his chart i don't i think would mitigate that indulgence but i do see him really desiring some financial stability and maybe even luxury since it's in the sign of libra and with the north node here this can really heighten your emotional experience and make you even more intuitive and chiron is often the asteroid linked with being a healer. I see this a lot in psychics actually. And Chiron is involved here with his north node indicating that part of his purpose and his path in this lifetime is to bring stability within people's lives since it's in the second house of stability um, and security. And it's in the sign of Libra, which is related to relationships and people. So he's really meant to bring that into people's lives and gain financial wealth as a result of that. So we can see that here very strongly. He has also, the, or sorry, his moon is also the ruler of his 11th house. So we can see here he's very much a people person with his moon in Libra, with Venus on his, on his descendant, and even the square to Pluto can enhance that desire for relationships and connection. But it can create that fear around it as well. And I think it's because the moon, the ruler of his 11th house of friendships, see it's Cancer on the 11th house cusp, the moon is the ruler of Cancer, is squaring Uranus, like I mentioned, and Neptune. And so this is going to create that difficulty in feeling like he can belong. So this is him getting bullied in high school, not feeling like he had a strong friend group, not knowing maybe what his stance was in the world or his own sexuality or who he enjoyed being around or who would accept him. All those things could come up when Moon, the ruler of the 11th, is in a square with Uranus. You could feel like relationships are volatile, at least until you get into maybe a more mature phase of your life where that's less of this kind of instability and so i think that's part of what developed this fear here with venus uh, making a square to pluto um he also has saturn in the seventh house of relationships so this can indicate having a little bit more lessons when it comes to relationships with others having to learn boundaries especially in the sign of pisces um and i think 
boundaries is a huge thing that comes up in his chart again and again and again, where he might take on with his Venus square Pluto emotions and feelings of those around him with Neptune and the sun. He might also do that with moon and Libra. He's really concerned with others, with fairness and equality, what's good for everyone involved. So we can see just a lot of emphasis on other people in his life. And then on top of that, he has Saturn here. So Saturn in his relationship house is basically going to indicate that he may have to navigate how to find balance and boundaries, how to set up a structure and certain rules to live by in his own life, how to create strong like sense of integrity within his relationships. Not that he's not, doesn't have integrity, but that maybe he has to kind of grow a little bit of a backbone and push back on people um, in order to make maybe feel like he's empowered. And so that's a really big theme is power dynamics, boundary dynamics in his relationships. And that's something if you were a client that I would really talk to him about. He may also be interested in dating somebody who is older or younger, or he may find his true partner later in life and settle down later in life. Sometimes that can happen with Saturn in the seventh house as well. So let's go ahead and take a look at his transits when his TV show aired. So we can see that his TV show aired on the 24th of January in 2016. And during this time, he didn't even have like super, super major transits. So I honestly imagine that his career is going to continue to grow. Um, he did have some positive transits, some somewhat significant transits. But I do think that if this is what he's getting on a somewhat mild transit, then I think over time he will start to achieve even more. So we can see here... He, first of all, has Jupiter conjunct the North Node, transiting his first house. So Jupiter North Node is really positive. It's They're exactly at 22 degrees both. So this is going to bring the potential for growth and expansion, especially in your first house. This is going to mean that you have new opportunities. You have new outreach. You have new possibilities in life and the potential to help others as well. And not only is it transiting his first house, but it's making a very tight trine with his son, and Neptune. So this is his career. So it's, he is going to be very positively benefited from this transit. And it's very a faded kind of karmic thing that's happening because the North Node brings about faded events. So we can see he was meant to reach this level of fame so he could go out and help the world. He also has Venus transiting his Jupiter at this time. So this is just another repeating pattern where I see he's going to have abundance, where he's going to have New relationships come in, new opportunities come in, maybe even romantic connections that can come in as a result of this growing fame. So we can see again, when we see these kind of positive planets repeating patterns through the chart, we can see whatever is happening at this time is going to be a very good thing for his life. On top of this, he has his son on his Mercury at this time, which is, which I've mentioned is his career planet. So the sun is bringing him attention, illumination to his career, and a little bit more notoriety as well. And then lastly, he had Saturn moving through the fourth house, making a sextile to Chiron in the second. So you can see it's a almost an exact sextile. So Saturn moving through the fourth house can bring some kind of karma or justice to a situation that has been going on behind the scenes because the fourth house is hidden. So there is almost like some justification or justice happening for all of the years and years and years of work he did, of readings he gave, of effort he put into things to help people. And we can see that specifically because it's making a sextile to Chiron on his north node, which is his asteroid associated with his healing abilities for others. So it's like he's having some kind of karmic payoff for all of that time that he's put in prior healing others. So that is what I'm seeing for Tyler. If you guys enjoyed this, please let me know by liking, commenting down below. If you want an astrology reading like this, but a lot more in depth, then definitely check me out at willsboom.com. I have tons of readings from life purpose readings, relationship readings, business readings, transits. So looking at your upcoming year and I can answer all of your questions. So I hope you guys have a beautiful day. Bye.